Alright guys, this is going to be one of a few videos on cranial ultrasound. This first video is going to be on normal cranial anatomy. Um, cranial ultrasound technique, of course, we use both 8 MHz curved and 12 MHz linear transducers, and we primarily image through the anterior fontanelle. We also obtain some images through the mastoid fontanelle, which is posterior to the ear. Uh, that gives us better visualization of the posterior fossa structures, such as the cerebellum. Of course, we obtain images in both coronal and sagittal planes. Here's just an example of uh, the standard still images that you would obtain for cranial ultrasound in both the sagittal and coronal planes. Um, of course, we also obtain uh, cine images in both the coronal and sagittal planes, which encompass these same positions, um, but some institutions uh, only rely on still images, and so these are the standard um, sets of still images that you need to obtain. In the sagittal plane, uh, you take a straight midline uh, sagittal image and two parasagittal images that uh, angle through the cotyphalamic groove region. In the coronal plane, you take six images one including the frontal horns of the lateral ventricles, one running through the third ventricle, one running through the fourth ventricle, one through the cerebellum, one through the uh, posterior horns of the lateral ventricles, and the last through the posterior periventricular white matter. Um, a few important structures um, of normal anatomy uh, in both imaging planes. Uh, the lateral ventricles, directly above the lateral ventricles in a normal patient will be the hypoechoic uh, corpus callosum. Inferior to the lateral ventricles are the caudate nuclei. Between the ventricles is the cavum septum pellucidum, and just below the cavum septum pellucidum is the third ventricle. Slightly more posteriorly, again we have the lateral ventricles, the corpus callosum directly above the lateral ventricles, caudate nuclei off to the side and inferior to the lateral ventricles. Sylvian fissures are off to both sides of the brain. Uh, we have normal choroid uh, at this level. At this particular position, we see the three bright dots of choroid plexus. This is what's termed the three dot sign. This is a normal finding. We have um, choroid plexus within the floors of the lateral ventricles and in the roof of the third ventricle. And on this particular image, we see them all together, and it's the three-dot sign. We start to get a little bit of the thalami as we move more posteriorly. Again, extending more posteriorly still, uh, we uh, encounter more of the choroid plexus. This is the normal uh, echo texture and appearance of the choroid plexus. Uh, the choroid plexus is normally the, the brightest structure within the brain, and we use that as an internal reference when we're um, assessing for certain abnormalities. The choroid uh, should be fairly symmetric, although the choroid plexus can have um, irregular contour as well as clefts and other things that can make them look a bit irregular. And they should also have fairly homogeneous echotexture. And slightly more posteriorly still, now where we are in the periventricular white matter of the posterior brain. And again, this is the normal architecture that we should encounter. If you notice, the periventricular white matter does have a diffuse low level uh, of echogenicity. But comparing to the echogenicity of the choroid plexus, it is not as bright. Uh, so that's an important thing when we're looking for periventricular leukomalation in particular. Moving to the sagittal planes, this is our straight uh, midline sagittal image, and we see a few important structures. Uh, one of the biggest is the corpus callosum. Again, it's a hypoechoic band, and this is the, the normal, fully formed corpus callosum. Uh, so we see it uh, coming from anteriorly uh, sweeping around uh, and ending posteriorly back here. Uh, there are certain diseases that we either have 
complete absence of the corpus callosum, or the corpus callosum partially formed. So we can see part of it, but we may be missing uh, the posterior part or another section of it. So that's an important structure to assess on the midline image. Another important structure to assess, um, cavum septum pellucidum. This is the choroid plexus within the roof of the third ventricle. The third ventricle is here. Fourth ventricle uh, down there, brain stem. And the other important structure in the midline to assess is this structure here, which is the vermis of the cerebellum. Uh, this is a structure that can also be absent in some um, conditions like dandy walker malformations and other uh, conditions. So some of the major uh, structures to assess on the midline image. Uh, now we're off um, perisagittal or off midline uh, to one side. And this is the important image uh, where we see our caudothalamic groove, which is the uh, prime time area for assessing germinal matrix hemorrhages. So two important structures on this image. You have your caudate nucleus here and your thalamus here. And the little indentation or divot between the two, that is the caudothalamic groove. That is the, the area that we're focused on the most looking for germinal matrix hemorrhages.